All right, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about Barrow's Rise of the Six and how you can kill it solo. This is not intended to be a solo, a solo boss and when you start going over some of the mechanics, you'll see why, but you can solo it decently easily with Necromancy and I think it's a fun challenge. It will be one of the hardest things you see on this channel, at least for the time being, but I think it's a fun challenge and then once you get used to it, the money is very, very good. So, we don't have a ton of food. It's not difficult because you take a lot of damage, although there is damage for you to take. It's difficult because you get punished extremely hard for making mistakes. So that's what this food is here for. Um, we have runes for Threads of Fate and we have runes for Darkness. Darkness is really good because it actually works here. We're wearing the full tank armor and tier 90 stuff. Uh, if you want to wear a book, the best book is honestly Scripture of Full or Grimoire. Those are very expensive. The Scripture of Full has a really high upfront price. A Grimoire has a very high up upkeep price. So I'm just not using a book to show you that's doable either way. Barrow's Brothers are undead. So Salve Amulet, obviously very, very good here. Um... I bring Splink Craner because sometimes they drop al alcables from the, the uh, chest. Ritual Shard and Excalibur are also good too. Uh, Dragon Dying is to get here. And Barrow's Totems, you need this for each uh, attempt. So that's why I have them. So the main mechanic is that there are gonna be th there's going to be two rooms with three brothers in each room. After about 22 to 24 seconds, the brothers will hop over and then you're fighting all six at the same time. So the way we're going to do that is on the brothers that we are fighting for the first half, we're going to slowly whittle them down and we're going to build stacks of residual souls and stacks of necrosis. When we get the message that all the brothers are hopping over, we're going to split soul and then we're going to threads of fate and then we're going to click on Carol if he's targetable because he might use a spec as soon as he comes over and then we're going to finger of death, volley of souls, weapon spec. Ideally that kills Carol. If not, he should be low enough. We can just finish him off with uh, basics. And then after Carol's dead, we want to just use Death Skulls and slowly clean up everyone up. Now, Carol is the most dangerous brother. He has a... Him and Aram have a mechanic uh, where they'll spin in circles and do a uh, beam attack. As long as you're three squares away from them, the beam won't do any damage to them. But they are invulnerable while they're, they're doing it, so... Keep that in mind. It's more annoying than it is, like, hard, but it is very annoying. Um, they can also go up on the pillars between the rooms. If that happens, I'm 99% sure they can still be damaged by uh, non-melee attacks. I'm pretty sure they, they can. If it happens, then we'll we'll check. I'm 99% sure that they can be, be damaged. I just don't remember because it's been a little while since that's happened to me. Um, Carol's other two attacks that are exclusive to Carol is he will summon shadow bombs while hopping from side to side, uh, like from one, one room to another room. Each shadow bomb at minimum does 4,800 damage at maximum will do 8,000 and depends on your distance away from it. There is nothing that you can do about this really besides just tank the hit. So make sure you eat, eat food. That's what my food is for, is for dealing with shadow bomb. Generally, you shouldn't be taking that much damage if you're doing mechanics properly. So, his other mechanic is a lightning wall. Just, he'll send lightning down one side or down one of the rooms. If this happens, I believe it hits you once, but it might hit you more than that depending on if you get caught in the lightning. Those are his only two uh, real mechanics besides the uh, fire spin. Uh, Aram also does the fire spin, and he can sometimes, or not so sometimes, if you hit him once, he'll go in into the air. When that happens, he takes half necromancy damage. That's pretty much it. His other mechanics kind of don't matter. Torag is the only dangerous melee brother because he has a jump attack where he'll do like a little hop and then slam his hammer into you. If this happens, you can't play the game anymore, so you just have to teleport. 
You can still eat and like use your prayers and stuff, but you can't cast any of your abilities. In four man rots, someone can free you, but you're in one man rots. So you have to teleport. The kill's over if that happens. The uh, other dangerous brother is Dorok. He can just auto attack really hard. And if you're not kiting properly, which kiting is the uh, moving while casting and not like stuttering yourself. Then we talked about PBM Academy in episode 3. If you're moving while wall casting, he shouldn't ever hit you, but there's a lot going on, so it is pretty easy to like lose track of stuff. But So he's also a dangerous brother. The other two melee brothers basically do, do nothing. They shouldn't ever be hitting you if you're doing it right. Um, mastery of the moving while doing damage is going to be paramount to killing this boss. If you can't do that... This boss is going to be extremely difficult for you, so just keep that in mind. Typically, I like to start on the opposite side of Carol. Um, a lot of people like to start on the same side as Carol. My only issue with that is that sometimes when you're fighting Carol, he'll do his Shadow Bomb mechanic, and the other brothers can't hop to your side if he's doing Shadow Bombs. I've had this happen late into like the first phase, where he'll start doing it at 20 seconds, and then the other brothers don't hop over for like 45 seconds. It's really annoying. So I like to start on the opposite side of Carol. He usually does a mechanic a couple seconds after he hops over. That's why doing burst damage is so important, but that that's the deal. Another important mechanic, it's not crazy, crazy important, but it does help with quality of life, is target cycling. If you go into your settings, uh, and scroll all the way down. At the bottom of the action bar, there is cycle target forwards. I have that on you. If you press it, it just changes your target without you having to click on another U unit. It's very useful, especially if you have triple melee brothers, because they'll just all be on top of each other. So target cycle lets you kite them around without having to worry about that. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in. Summon all of our guys. We're going to life transfer. Activate Vengeful Ghost. And we're going to quick start. We're going to start building stacks. Target cycles so we don't get any of the brothers too, too low. Target cycle again. So right about now, they're going to start hopping. We're going to split soul. Volley. Click on Carol. Weapon spec. Finger of death. Volley. So Carol's dead. That's really, really good. We're pretty much in the, the clear now. We Now we want to target cycle to Torag and kill him. You'll also notice that the brothers' bars are counting up now. What that means is if they fill up, then uh, they'll all re respawn. Okay, so now uh, Aram is the last brother, so we'll just resummon guys. And we'll just kill him. You can pretty much just stand still and kill Aram. It's like not the biggest deal. He does take the half damage. You you are seeing that now. It's pretty meaningful, the half damage, but we should be able to kill him in time. If you want, you can even uh, invoke death for Aram. Perfect. So that is a Roth kill. <clears throat> so now we'll hop over, we loot the chest. After you with the chest, you'll get these unstable malevolent energies. In order to stabilize these, you need to leave the uh, the area. So you'll notice that there are these vines, and then there's going to be pedestals that you can cross. Those are going to be the fastest way over. Uh, so we're just going to start that. You'll see that a timer is going to start. If the timer runs out, you don't like instantly die or anything. Just what happens is 
um, you start taking pretty rapid typeless damage. So you can eat through the typeless damage, like it's not that big of a deal, but ideally you want to get out of here as fast as possible. Having mobile is very good here because it reduces the, the cooldowns, it's not necessary. Um, also having double surge, very, very good. But yeah, that is a rot kill. We're going to do a second one just to go over it again because we did misclick a little bit. But we will be doing a second one. Because the kills are really short, so might as well, right? Well, not really short, but short enough. So again, starting on the opposite side of Carol. And the big thing we want to do is we want to split soul, finger of death, volley of souls, weapon spec. Or a split soul, uh, threads of fate, finger of death, volley of souls, weapon spec. That's what we want to do when all six brothers are on our, our side. So again, uh, protect melee, summon everything. Activate Ghost. Um, life Transfer. Then we're going to start kiting the guys. Target Cycle. Make sure we don't get any of the brothers too low. So they should be hopping over right about now. And there was the thing. I didn't say it out loud because I was, like, trying not to die. But, yep, that's uh, the combo. So Torag's dead, I think. Yes, Tor Torag is dead. So now we can just focus on killing Aaron. We're going to bloat. Uh, we have a ton of time, so we don't have to invoke death or anything. Nice, perfect. And then after we did our combo, which was Split Soul, Threads of Fate, Finger of Death on Carol, Three Stack Volley on Carol, Weapon Spec, then we just did Skulls on the remaining brothers. So we'll search the chest. We got another energy. It's either one or two. I think it's an equal chance of each. And then we'll get out of here. I'm only going to use one bladed dive and one surge just so you can kind of see. Like, this was one of the easier tunnels. And with just one of each, like, we get here with, what, like eight seconds left? So, yeah, that is Solo Rise of the Six. So, I think a full clear for me, if assuming every kill is going to be about one, one minute, we're going to be getting around 45 energy per hour. So, one of them is one mil. So, if you can get around 30 to 45 energy per hour, I mean, 30 mil an hour guaranteed is really, really good. And 30 mil an hour is, what, 20, 20 kills? That's two-minute kills. That was my, my first kill was, what, 131? So, two-minute kills I think is pretty manageable. And uh, if you're getting consistent two minute kills you're going to be making around 30 mil an hour from just the energy and not including any of the trash loot you get kite shields i think the cheapest one is 15 mil the most expensive is 35 so there is a lot of money to be made here and it's very 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 consistent um yeah i think that's it uh, i don't think i missed anything um yeah okay if you like the video uh, give it a like if you want to see more content give me a uh, sub subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one